His job then was to the pleasure of introducing our speaker from the Obama transition team. Uh, we are pleased and proud to have Blair Levin, who is the team leader of the Technology Innovation and Government Reform Task Force of the Obama transition. So he's been working with everyone in this space that's advising the, the new administration on the architecture, their policy plans, on where they plan to go. Um, Blair really needs no introduction. He was chief of staff to Reed Hunt when he was chairman of the FCC uh, in the early 90s. We were joking just, just uh, on the way in that one of the great achievements of the 1996 telecom rewrite, which, which Blair helped to oversee at the staff level, was that it really didn't do much to the internet and left it for another day, uh, which allowed, I think, a lot of innovation to take place um, over the last decade and a half. And I think he's proud of that achievement. We're proud that he did it. Um, but uh, he's, he is on a tight schedule. Um, it is, we are proud that this is, I think, the first time uh, that the, the Innovation Task Force has, has been able to comment publicly at least about some of their, their major plans or, and the, the architecture and the things that they've been considering. Um, Blair cannot take questions. He is on a tight schedule and um, uh, has many miles to go. But uh, it is my pleasure to introduce Blair Levin. Jerry, thank you very much for that kind introduction. You know, you were saying that um, you've been around a long time. I, I think I think of you in the internet the same way my father thought of FDR and the presidency, which is there's only one. And uh, uh, he grew up in that generation, and I kind of grew up in the generation that, that looks at you in terms of internet policy. There, you are the person uh, I remember talking with you back in the early 90s before I actually knew there was an internet. Um, and you were, a, you've been a terrific resource. and, and force in this world. Um, uh, I also might say that he mentioned I was part of an achievement. If there are any budding chiefs of staff out there, I would say my advice to you is you actually should never be proud of an achievement because your job is to take credit for all the mistakes. And your boss takes credit for all the achievements. And so it was a, it was a great pleasure to work with Reed, but it was Reed who really did that. Um, and, and I mess things up as, as much as all chiefs of staff do. I, I, I'm, I'm very sorry to hear the news about uh, Congressman Boucher's uh, mother. Uh, I, I really, uh, one of my principal jobs here was to congratulate him on taking over the chairmanship. I think it's, uh, you know, we all know his great work in starting the Internet Caucus, his terrific uh, work in his many years in the Congress. Uh, it is uh, terrific that you have someone leading that subcommittee who has such a great understanding both of the issues, but, but more importantly of the essential need to make sure the internet reaches all Americans. Because of the district that he serves, um, he can be a true champion for making sure that the benefits of tw the 21st century information technology really does reach all Americans. Uh, he will do a fantastic job, I'm sure. Also wanted to honor his work on uh, transparency in government. Uh, he received an award this year, it's something that we in the group that uh, I've been leading on transition care a great deal about, and I'll talk about that uh, very quickly. And I must say that stepping aside from my job with the transition to the job I just took a leave from uh, as an analyst, I have been really struck by the kind of fierce intelligence that he brings to these issues, his deep understanding, um, his desire to get really to the underlying facts. Uh, he's great. I also just wanted to acknowledge that while I'm delighted that uh, the congressman is taking over that role. I think everyone in this room owns a great gratitude to the person who kind of in some sense switched, Congressman Markey, who, who had that role and really for, for so many decades has been a leader, a personal inspiration to me in, in many, many ways, both in the 96 Act, um, but in so many ways brought such wonderful uh, charm and intelligence and uh, uh, energy to all of these issues over many, many years, both when he was in the majority and when he was in the minority. And uh, I really just wanted to thank him for, for the many, many things he's done. 
Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the group, but first I want to talk very quickly about something that's been in the news a lot. And I, I might say this is the only, I'm, I'm, as, as many of you know, I do, uh, I often speak at things, but during the time of the transition, I have been in a transition bubble. I have not really talked to anybody um, uh, other than the people who come into the building and uh, the industry groups that come in and the uh, public interest groups that come in, but I've not talked to press and I've not given speeches. Um, the Congressional Liaison Office and other folks gave me an exception for this in part to honor Congressman Boucher. But I do want to talk just a little bit about um, uh, something that's been in the news. Let me turn this mic on. Is this mic working? Yeah, it is. It is? This mic? Can you hear me? Can you hear me in the back? Okay. Because uh, I want to draw something. We've, we've now exhausted the extent of my uh, artistic ability. <laughs> um, I want to talk about the broadband stimulus plan. Um, that, 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 by the way, is not a number. That's a, a Venn diagram. <laughs> it's important to understand that. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the size or the structure of the broadband stimulus plan uh, or what is the broadband portion of the Economic Recovery Act. Um, but I, I have seen a lot of reports uh, about it from, frankly, very reliable sources. But in this particular case, I think they're, uh, they're off target. And I think there are two reasons why they're off target. One is it's a very iterative process. The, uh, the transition team takes very seriously what the president-elect has said about working with Congress, working with others, letting the best idea win. So we float some ideas. People float ideas back. We're trying to develop uh, a process through which the best possible idea will ultimately prevail. Uh, but the second reason is that I think that in the reports, people are confusing the national broadband goals generally with the very specific goals of broadband and the economic recovery package. And it misses the different problem sets that we're solving for. So we start from the perspective that there are certain public policy goals in broadband. Uh, represented by that circle. And you, you, you start, for example, with where are the gaps? And I think there's general agreement that there are certain kinds of gaps that are very important. There is the gap for communities that have no broadband, the unserved. There's gaps for communities that don't have good fiber. They're underserved. They, they should have higher speeds. They have what you might think of as broadband, but they don't have uh, the kind of broadband connectivity that enables a lot of things to happen if you had higher speeds. Um, uh, you have public safety. We, have a, we do not have a national broadband network for public safety. And you certainly have, as the president-elect said in his December 6th speech, uh, in terms of adoption, as a country we have fallen behind. We used to be the leader, we've fallen behind. We have to do it. And you also don't want to make anything, you, you don't want to do anything um, that makes a competitive market more difficult. So you have a goal of a robust competitive market in broadband as well. So that's where you start from. But that's not where you end. Um, and there are several other considerations. In the economic recovery package, and if my voice doesn't reach the back, because I can't tell if this mic is working, just raise your hand so I can tell. So what you have is you have an economic recovery Let's go with a different color. So you have the economic recovery package, and that's the timely, targeted, and temporary. Um, so in other words, whereas you have national broadband goals, the only thing you're doing in the economic recovery are those things you can accomplish that are timely, targeted, temporary, and lead to lots of jobs, because that's the criteria here. But it actually gets more tricky than that, because as you're doing, uh, Time, timely, in order to do something on a timely basis, you have to move quickly. And in order to do that, you kind of have to use existing structures. You can't, there are lots of different creative things that people want to do, but creativity, building a structure for distributing money, um, you know, um, you, you, you have to do it kind of within, roughly speaking, existing um, structures. So that limits even more what you really can do. And, um, and then finally, you really have to take seriously 
what we might think of as the OMB issues, which you have to, you have to distribute the money in a way which mitigates uh, the possibility of waste, fraud, and abuse. So at the end of the day, what you're looking at in terms of the broadband piece is a subset of that. By the way, this is not drawn to scale. Um, I, I really do not want to speak about size or structure for a variety of reasons. I'm, I'm just going to do it. But the thing that I, I just want to communicate is that we're trying to, in, in the economic recovery package, do something that meets all four kind of, of those uh, sets. So it's a subset of what is national. Now I think the President-elect is very serious about articulating, uh, about reaching the national broadband goals that he has set forth both in several of the uh, weekly addresses since he has been elected, but really on the first day that he announced for the presidency. He was the first president, uh, first candidate in history to mention broadband uh, in his announcement speech. Uh, he mentioned it a number of times in the campaign. Obviously, uh, there was, uh, on, the, on the campaign website, there was a lot of uh, discussion of it as well. Uh, and I think we see it in terms of the economic recovery piece. It's important to do something. It's important. There are some projects that you definitely can do. It's important to get things going. It's important to create jobs, and there's a job creating aspect of this. It's also important, though, to get more data so that you understand more precisely where those gaps are, and that's why um, you know, it's good that Congress passed the mapping bill. But the message that I just want to make sure you all know is that in thinking about broadband in the economic recovery piece, don't confuse a piece of the puzzle with the puzzle. Don't confuse an inning of the baseball game with the baseball game. There is, one has to look at kind of a broader sweep about doing a variety of different things. And the broadband piece of the Obama agenda is not going to be done solely in the economic recovery um, package. Um, so then let me just say, make a few more comments about what we've been doing in this technology and innovation group. And tech, it's called Technology Innovation Government Reform. We refer to it as TIGER. Um, we could pronounce it TIGER, but we prefer TIGER because, first of all, it was one of my kids' favorite characters. And we like to think of ourselves as bouncy, 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 fun, 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 fun. Uh, but the most important thing about Tigger is we're the only one, and we actually are the only one. There's never been a technology innovation government reform group in either a transition or, or government. It's a very interesting group. Uh, it was a policy group. You know, most policy groups are like verticals. That, that is to say, you know, healthcare, education, um, uh, energy, environment. We're kind of a vertical that works with all of these different groups. Now, I, I'm co-leading this group with. Um, uh, two colleagues and two very good friends, uh, Julius Janikowski and Sonal Shaw. They are fantastic people. Uh, they are actually, in my view, two of, the, two of the greatest people I've ever had a chance to work with. They're absolutely wonderful. Uh, they're both real practical visionaries. And that's the kind of spirit that I think has um, gotten into our whole team and hopefully um, will radiate throughout the Obama administration. The notion of being both looking uh, to do great things while being very practical while doing them. Uh, but I really, uh, while I think very, very highly of Julius and Sonal, I really want to acknowledge my colleague in this effort, Alec Ross, uh, who's in the back there, um, who in his work with One Economy uh, is truly an internet hero because the work that that nonprofit uh, has done over the years in some ways is, uh, um, I think we should all as a country be so proud of what that group did. And Alec brought that same energy um, enthusiasm and a, and a similar spirit of being a practical visionary to working with us in the transition. He is there, the first person there every morning. He is about the last person to leave. And I really just want to thank you, Alec, for the work you have done. And I say this, by the way, not simply because two of my children uh, worked as summer interns for him, including my daughter Ari, who's also in the back there. Uh, but Alec is really. Uh, been a, a spark plug for our group's effort. Our group is composed of four subgroups, each answering a different question. The first, government reform. How can we use technology and innovation to make government more open, transparent, um, collaborative, participatory, effective? Uh, a second is, how can technology and innovation uh, help us address all the big challenges facing our country, working with 
whether it be healthcare groups and healthcare IT or the immigration groups and some of the networks that will be needed if there's immigration reform uh, or the energy group or in the case of the broadband stimulus, the economy. A third is how do we restore science as an engine of innovation in America? And I think if you look at some of the appointments, um, it's clear that science and technology are back at a forefront of the Obama administration. Dr. Chu at the Energy Department, Dr. Holdren at OSTP, others to be named, others who have been named, um, but also our group has been working on kind of some of the, framing some of the science policy stuff that I think uh, will help this country uh, renew its, both its commitment to science, but also renew American leadership in a number of, uh, number of areas. And then fourth, how do we leverage social entrepreneurs and public-private partnerships to advance our country's agenda? Um, I want to focus on the group on government reform because I think it's an example of how the internet creates an opportunity uh, to run a totally different kind of government. Uh, one that is, again, more open, transparent, responsive, accountable, and, uh, and efficient. So that if you look at change.gov, the website for the transition, which our group actually, uh, other people built it, but our group participated in helping uh, think about it. You know, for the first time, you see donors online. You see um, something called Your Seat at the Table, which allows every American to see the documents that are being sent to us. It allows them to see how people are thinking about these problems. Um, something that just went up a few days ago um, called the Citizens Briefing Book, uh, a kind of a mechanism that allows people to vote on various ideas and that those ideas would be included in the briefing book for the president. And as anyone knows, as everyone should know, the most important asset uh, of a president is their time. And if, if citizens can get an idea in front of the president, uh, that's, that's a significant thing. You see community discussions on a variety of topics such as health care. These are all, none of these things, I mean, one should look at all of these things as precursors to a way to run the government. It is a demonstration, in my view, of kind of a spirit, as FDR said, bold, persistent experimentation. I think when you look at six months from now, when you look at the way the government will allow people to see what's going on with uh, the economic recovery package, where the money is going, and things like that, and you compare it to what happened with TARP, um, You'll, you'll see the kind of difference in the way that uh, government is being run in a very important way. You know, just as the operations of many companies, as really all companies, has been changed by the technologies that grew up on the web, particularly Web 2.0, um, I think a few years from now we'll look back, and hopefully with great pride, and see the same kind of phenomenon with our government, that everybody has to change. So whether it be, um, the chief technology officer that has been discussed, the chief performance officer who was recently named, and other new positions, they're all part of a process of building a 21st century government capable of renewing American leadership in, in a number of fields, including uh, in information technology and communications. So let me just conclude with a quote from the president-elect in his Time Magazine interview as Man of the Year. He said, two years from, he was asked, you know, what do you want the American people to, to think about? And he talked about a couple of issues um, that he wanted to work on. But then he said more generally, quote, two years from now, I want the American people to be able to say, government's not perfect. There are some things Obama does that get on my nerves. But you know what? I feel like the government's working for me. I feel like it's accountable. I feel like it's transparent. I feel like I'm well informed about what government actions are being taken. I feel this is a president and an administration that admits when it makes mistakes and adapts itself to new information that believes in making decisions based on facts and on science as opposed to what is politically expedient. Um, I think that's a great challenge uh, for the government and, and all of us who have had the great opportunity to work in the transition and particularly in the Tigger team uh, have been focused on trying to make sure that uh, this is a government that has the tools that can enable it to be that kind of government, a government more open, transparent, can see more clearly when it makes a mistake, admits that mistake, has that spirit of bold, persistent experimentation. The internet is a huge part of it, and I know that the work that the Internet Caucus 
uh, has done and will continue to do, particularly to this session, will enable the entire government to have that kind of same spirit. And with that, Jerry, I think I need to get back to the office, but thank you all very much. Really appreciate it.